everybody. Welcome to No Story is Sacred. If you've never listened before, basically we're four siblings who grew up talking about the art of storytelling. Now that we're adults, we're still talking about it, and we're inviting you to join the conversation. I'm Kat, and I do not have enough background knowledge for this. I'm Alex, and... Whoa! Whoa! Whoa. Ow, Ow, what a jump! (laughs) (laughs) Huh? <laughs> Look at that! I- I'm sorry. Who's born next? Oh, oh fuck! Sorry. I was- <laughs> <laughs> Alex tried to roll higher on initiative. <laughs> Alex wanting to get out of the twin pack because Pippin's yeah. the worst. I heard. <laughs> wow! Yeah, yeah. Wow! Yeah. Fuck you two. <laughs> nah. I'm Brendan, and let's find out what happens tonight on Dungeons and Dragons and Diners and Drive-ins and Dives. <laughs> I'm Pippin, and I'm proficient in charisma. Y'all can bite me. Sure. Oh, I'm. I'm gonna roll an insight check. Oh no. Ooh. Fuck you. <laughs> My DM thinks I'm cool. <laughs> you are the DM. Yeah. You <laughs> come. Wait, was that the joke? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alex, you go. I'm Alex, and I'm gonna roll to. Let's see if I succeed in the opening. One. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, no. <laughs> Way to go, Alex. Today we're talking about a story idea by Brendan, Escape from Flavortown, with the idea of it becoming a Dungeons & Dragons campaign. If you want specific content warnings about things we may talk about, check out the show notes on nostoriesacred.com. Part of the summary provided to us by Brendan is... Long ago, there was a town known far and wide for its cooking prowess. This attracted gourmands from all over the world, and eventually, other worlds. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> Soon it became a place where every aspiring chef would travel in pilgrimage. However, the town mysteriously disappeared several years ago. Every year since, groups of chefs assemble to search for this place. Most come back never finding anything. Some never come back. At all. Oh, spooky, so, spooky. <laughs> so I'm not going to lie. I suddenly got a vision of six, six string samurai. And I'm not even sure why. Yes. You know, you can play with that aesthetic. You can have any kind of inspiration you want when it comes to making a campaign setting, which really this is all like maybe not even campaign. This is like more like a adventure module overall yeah (laughs) hey so can you maybe because i i feel like i'm coming to this with zero knowledge fair Um, fair because unlike unlike my siblings i don't uh do this shit i mean i don't (laughs) it's not like i've never done it but it's not one of my current hobbies so what is what is it that you're trying to create here what is Dungeons and Dragons? Oh wow, <laughs> <laughs> that's basically what you're asking. <laughs> now, um, so the idea here is to create a basically goofy adventure because you know what? At the end of the day, when it comes to playing with a group of people who may not uh, be theater majors or writers or anything like that. A lot of character storytelling in D&D tends to be awkward and goofy, so sometimes it's fun to just steer into the skid, kind of. Do you understand? So why not have a module setting or adventure where, you know what, we're just gonna have a goofy good time. So, like, uh, for instance... uh as I hinted with my title of the adventure and uh, my opening, uh, the principal antagonist for this adventure is the demon lord Guy Fiery, which is the only reason why I wanted to make this happen in the first place, because food puns were doing them. <laughs> uh, fair. Yeah. So, uh, again, all we're looking for here is goofy good times had by all and then frankly i think it might be fun to talk as a group about how to tackle uh, a more non-linear story because i don't think we don't think we've ever really talked about like non-linear storytelling at all really because 
for the most part when it comes to books, movies, TV shows, all that. Well, maybe TV shows to a lesser degree. Um, we're talking linear story progression, right? Yeah. Point A, point A to point B, yeah. Yeah, but with uh, an interactive adventure, you have to be cognizant of the fact that the group of players can do pretty much whatever the heck they want. Or rather, they can try and do whatever the heck they want. Whether they succeed, that's another story. Fuck you, we're going to be pirates. The reason yeah. I don't play y'all's game, and this uh-huh. is clearly a reason as opposed to the fact that you haven't invited me, uh, <laughs> is because genuinely I'm like, can I play as a camel that doesn't talk? And that's like where I would go with it. And I'm like, you know what? You don't need that kind of asshole in your group. <laughs> we already have one. I know you do. Everything I could do, John's already doing. Shout out to John. <laughs> yeah, Fuck pretty you, much. John. Well, at the same time, though, <laughs> you know... Interesting choices can happen. Like, uh, I draw a lot of inspiration for the premise of this, uh, module from, I guess, the, the Curse of Strahd campaign that I ran, uh, last year. Describe. In which, uh, you are trapped in the demiplane of dread by the vampire lord, uh, Strahd von Zarevich. It happens. It does. But like, my players, uh, some of which are in the room right now, <laughs> among other things, eventually defeated the vampire lord, but like, also brought democracy to the valley, because why not? <laughs> yeah. They that- held an election. They that- rolled well. <laughs> that was not in the campaign guide. Uh, nope. And also happened before I got there. <laughs> yeah. I showed up and was like, what the fuck have you guys been doing? But like, so, so when you're running something like this, you gotta keep in mind, things can go off the rails really quick. Gotta know how to roll with the punches. Literally. It, haha. It, it, it's open world. Yeah. Open world. Yeah. Um, so, so with doing a more goofy adventure, it's like, you know what? If they decide to hold an election in the town, good for them weird, bizarre stuff is still going to happen, and dang it, you're going to have to challenge Guy Fiery to a cooking challenge to uh, end all cooking challenges, because if you try and do a straight-up one-on-one fight, you'll probably lose. <laughs> but if you go and complete all the plot coupons... Uh, uh, yeah, see, nice, see? nice, good job, good job. If you collect all the plot coup- uh, coupons, then... You can send away for a solution. <laughs> Pretty much. Or in this case, maybe you find uh, the five Michelin stars of power and kill. <laughs> and they depower him enough so that, you know, it takes him down from five legendary resistances to just three. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Stuff like that. It, it, it reduces his hit points, things like that. Actual technical things to actually make it work. Uh, also, because of who I am as a person, I I did look it up. And cat, if you wanted to, there mm-hmm. are stats available for a camel. <gasps> are there? Yes. Is it a non-talking camel? They have no language, so yeah. Oh my god, that's like perfect. I would just go around like eating shit. Be amazing. Uh, you'd have a charisma of five, and that- a normal person is ten. Uh, <laughs> this seems so me. It, uh, it very much it does. You could bite people. <gasps> oh my god, the dream! <laughs> You'd have fifteen hit points and a speed of fifty, so you could also just run at people. <gasps> they could not outrun you for the most part. <laughs> oh my god! I mean, and so I could just run up to people and bite them—is what you're telling me? Yes. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad oh, I can make this happen for you. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, Guy Fiery, what a dick. <laughs> yeah. So, so in the background of the, this adventure, as I said with the, uh, as was said with the opening, uh, we have a near legendary town. We're, we're thinking like a long lost city of flavor. Um, <laughs> umami. <laughs> oh, yes. The village of umami. Uh, or, 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 change around a little bit so that way it's not quite as on the nose i don't know um, we're gonna have fun with this if your main villain villain is guy fiery the nose true. is already there <laughs> that's true so general uh notes that i had about this so far 
final bad guy, Guy Fiery, because you know what? Having a uh, dungeon master have the opportunity to try and do their worst uh, Guy Fieri impression seems worth it to me. <laughs> worth mean, the price of admission. Legit. Uh, and, and then just the opportunity to have as many cooking show references, puns, everything like that. Uh, I made a note saying that, like, one of his lieutenants is werewolf gang puck. Yep. <laughs> uh, we, we, we could have, a, 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 a Ted Allen reference in the form of the chopper, you know. <laughs> I mean, the iron chef is right there. Uh, pip, pip. This is fantasy land. Mithril chef. Ooh. Come Fair on. Fair enough. Isn't this iron armor, isn't there? There is, but Mithril is more fantasy sounding and fun. <laughs> Fair enough. Is that currently owned by anyone? Like, does Time Warner have it? Uh, they don't have Mithril Chef. <laughs> fair enough. It still counts as tr- transformative. Fuck that noise. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. This is all fair use. All fair use. Yeah. <laughs> we say. So say we. <laughs> uh, I am definitely a lawyer. <laughs> sure. No, no. None of us are lawyers. Do not take anything we say as legal advice. Thank you. So, <laughs> uh, so, so just to kind of get the ball rolling, a big part about writing a story for modules like this is kind of a, a rivers and lakes approach. And by what I mean by that is that you have linear sections as you kind of like have like, story beats happen so like a, a river section for instance uh in this analogy to stretch it as thin as i possibly can is like the prologue bit where you just have to accept as part of the premise of running this adventure that the player characters are all chefs who are wanting to find this lost city of flavor um maybe they want to find the lost spices or something like that some some plot motivator Maybe they want to find the ultimate uh, bagel recipe. I don't know. So, so that's like river number one. And then when you enter this uh, this town, when you find it, that's when you enter what's called a, a lake where you can kind of explore around a little bit. The story isn't progressing you forward quickly, but like the second you find that one MacGuffin or plot coupon or whatever – that's when the next little story progression happens. So like, oh, you found the, uh, we, we joked about this before, uh, off, off podcast here. You found the, uh, the deck of many recipes. <laughs> oh, Guy Fieri or sorry, Guy Fiery knows about it now and is going to try and steal it from you because that might be one of the things that he's been looking for in this village the entire time. It's why he's been tormenting the villagers to find that recipe book. Guy Fiery will remember this. Yes, he will. And then he'll try and torment you. <laughs> because demon lords are like that. You know, it, it, it's something nice every once in a while where you can just have like straight up evil people. And it's like, yep. It's true. No nuance. Just, yeah, he's a bit of a dick. Like, oh, should we think this way? Should, no, fuck it. He's just bad. <laughs> I mean, you could you could have like some deeper motivations, like maybe uh, through cooking, da- uh, Guy Fiery found some amount of respite from the tortures of the nine hells. You know, actually, I'm imagining like a uh, uh, because we it's not an episode of of the podcast without bringing up either Hamlet or John Mulaney, <laughs> um, <laughs> or both John Mulaney as Hamlet. You go on. Um, but it'd be great if, if, you know, you have all your characters, like, infiltrating the ziggurat or whatever of, uh... uh g- <clears throat> Guy Fiery's kitchen ziggurat. Indeed. Um, and as they're trying to sneak around, you know, they see Guy Fiery, like, in front of a mirror, having, like, this deep conversation with himself, uh, being like, <laughs> sure. why do I do this? I think it's because of, you know, the love I didn't get as a child, and really trying to better the world. It, if only people could see what I wanted, they too enjoy. And like, but like that's going on and y'all just sneak the fuck past. You don't even finish hearing it. Well, one of the things is, is, uh, I have also been DMing, uh, <gasps> a game 
I know, I know. I'm a nerd. I, I'm sorry. You had to find out that's what. <laughs> um, uh, and and I noticed because I'm running a campaign from one of the official books. Um, because if you can't make your own campaign, store bought is fine. Yeah. But there's all the like little background details that the characters either haven't learned or can't possibly know, and some of it they might never know. Yep. <laughs> so it. It's the things you have to, which is an important lesson for writing, uh, just in general, because uh, there are going to be bits of your story that you yourself will know that is not important to your plot mm-hmm. uh, and does not need to be mentioned, but you still need to know about it anyway. And when, mm-hmm. and you can keep those to yourself and not put them on Pottermore. <laughs> oh. Called out. But I mean, also, like, you know, if if one of your characters has like in in your world building, if one of your characters has glasses, you yourself as an author should probably figure out whether or not glass exists, uh, and, and you know what level of technology, etc. and so forth. You do not necessarily need to torture the reader with that information. I mean, I don't want to know the history of up Thomas up Thomas Tree in this world, uh, <laughs> yeah. which is t- unfortunate. It's how you can get a very science fictioning sounding uh, story where it's like you describe every mundane t- detail about like technology X or some concept Y, you know, it's it can get a little tiring. Well, I mean, I'm working on a fantasy uh, uh, thing right now and I have to do all the world building and I'm sitting here being like, I need to know what their basic diet is and, and, and essentially what their crop rotation looks like. But nobody else needs to know that. I mean, that's. I just want to make sure that my food isn't stupid. <laughs> yeah. yeah. When I have them go and like, you know, do I have them get some corn or do I have them get the potato or do I have them get a cow? The correct answer here is a potato. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> potato discourse. Sorry. <laughs> I, I mentioned earlier about, um, having to collect numerous plot coupons in order to, be able to face off against Guy Fiery. And I think that's where the majority of the quote-unquote story can take place. So this this is where you guys really come in because, I don't know, I was just making food puns. Uh, The rest is up to you guys. (laughs) Rude. Yep. Look, look, I I thought Werewolf Gang Pug was, was fun. Just saying. Hmm. I, you can have a pasta answer. I'm just saying. Oh god, <laughs> I'm a bad guy. Here's the problem. I don't know enough. Like, I feel like the goal of this of of this whole thing is to have a bunch of food puns, and I just don't have that in me. Well, you don't have to just do that. There is tried and true story beats that we can try and follow here. Uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that aren't necessarily food pun related. That's where, that's where the peanut gallery, uh, so to speak, uh, can, can come in handy. Basically, the, the way I figure it can go is we can try to come up with a completely ridiculous story. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, and then, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we can, as necessary, uh, come up with amazing food puns. Uh, I or feel not. Like- I feel like Bobby Flay, you don't even need to do anything. You just need to give uh, him a flaying no. weapon. Bob no, the no, Flair. No, no. Pip. Rob- no, Robert the Flair. No, 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 no. Pip. Al. Bobby Mind Flair. Oh. Fair enough. Let yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and Kat, you don't need to worry about, you know, the mechanics aspect. Don't we I? will do that as necessary. Okay. Um, <laughs> and I would also like to point out that we keep throwing around Dungeons and Dragons. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is not the only tabletop RPG out there. True. Theoretically, cause since we're not going to actually design this whole thing, we're not, you can, if you felt like you wanted to, uh huh, you could translate this to any, uh, tabletop RPG, uh, you're comfortable with, cause it's just the bones of it. Uh, but yep. we might talk about Dungeons and Dragons, cause that's what we happen to know. You can translate mm-hmm. this to Honey Heist. <laughs> to be fair, I did DM a game of Honey Heist with my children using no BM. dice. What? You BM'd because you were the bear master, but <gasps> you go on. 
I don't use the word BM because I used to be an EMT. So anyway, um, brag. I, <laughs> thank you. Uh, bragging about knowing bowel movements. It's a thing. So I, I, I did, um, run a honey heist for my children. Uh, we did not have any dice. Um, I just made up random numbers. <laughs> They made up random numbers, and yet somehow they still, like, rolled a uh, natural 20 at the end to save the day. Of course. Uh, and and give stirring speeches, which moved me to tears, and let them win. I'm very proud of everyone. Listen, considering that the, the first time they tried to play, my daughter, uh, my youngest, decided that the best thing to do was to uh, just have the bear start killing people. And I'm like, that, no, that's not the point. She's like, I'm just going to have the, uh, and he tries to eat people. And like, it lasted less than a minute worth of game time. <laughs> Someday she's going to play actual D&D. Uh-huh. And she's going to be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Still try to eat everybody. Weird. <laughs> yeah. That, that, yeah. Oh, golly. Listen, she took the bear thing seriously. So yeah, uh, I, I guess for, for you guys, Let's just start off with the premise. Mm-hmm. Long lost, or not long lost, uh, a long lost city of chefs, mm-hmm. you know, just relaxed and all cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and then it gets absconded away to some nearby parallel dimension where the inhabitants are uh, tormented by a demon lord who likes to put mayo on everything. I don't know. Just throwing it uh, out there. <laughs> just, uh, just an example. And weirdly doesn't like eggs. <laughs> Once again, my daughter somehow. <gasps> now uh, we know. But no, um, so, so just, uh, just, you know, just spit out, uh, spit around ideas and we can see what we can, uh, craft as far as an adventure is concerned. I don't know. All I know is suddenly I, I feel in my heart. Uh, that there's a potion that's just an aioli. Yes. The aioli of tastiness, Pip. <laughs> and, and the lesser one is actually just mayo. <laughs> Cause that's all an aioli fucking is. Um. Ooh, call that. Uh, Pip, Pip, aioli is mayonnaise that's studied abroad. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> that's fucking terrible. I love it. Ah, great. Um. All right. So here. Brent, you were talking about sure. uh, uh, how one goes about sort of planning one of these things. You mentioned rivers yes. and lakes. Yes. Is there like an approximate number? Like when you're pre-planning, is there an approximate number of, let's say, lake areas that you're, you nope. want to aim nope. for? Um, in this case, it's not too too complicated. We have a central hub, a central lake, which is the town. Mm-hmm. So you can imagine... That when you first enter the town, there's like all sorts of places you could go to. You could go get a drink at the bar. William Sonoma. What's that? The William Sonoma? <laughs> you could go to the William Sonoma there. Wait, no, you go to the bar and the bartenders are William and Sonoma. Uh, yeah, yes. I just decided. Yes. yes. They give you helpful, friendly advice. Uh, and recipe <laughs> cards for shit you'll yes. never make. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, so you go ra- and explore and kind of figure out the mystery of what's going on. Why did this town disappear? Why is it that chefs that come here never come back? Uh, in some cases, it's because they get killed. Uh, <laughs> um, in other cases, they get uh, recruited. So I have another question. I, I mean, I'm, s- I'm sorry. I'm, I'm like asking so many of these things. Um, uh-huh. So what's... Do you do you figure out the win condition? Like, do you figure do you figure out a a means to an action adventure climax? I'm trying to to yeah, map yes, this course. to my own knowledge here. Yeah, of course. Uh, the win condition is in my head the target win condition because you can never outright say like this is the only way to mm-hmm, win mm-hmm. because players are creative and you know what they can always find ways around uh, the ultimate. Uh, final fight for instance uh the party that uh, i ran the vampire campaign with uh did a uh, giant solar laser pointer of death you gave uh, me access to the spell yeah i did that was my bad uh in other campaigns that i saw online 
they trapped the demon or the vampire lord in a doll forever. I mean, you can do that. The DM can do whatever they want. <laughs> I mean, it strikes me a little bit like what happens in Cabin in the Woods. You know, oh, yeah? uh, in Cabin in the Woods, there's uh, lose conditions, sort of. Um, yeah. And then, uh, and then one after another in Cabin in the Woods, uh, th- their various games that are going on all manage to avoid the lose conditions. Mm-hmm. One after the other, despite the fact that it should not be possible. So, like, in, in this case, the lose condition is everyone dies or those who don't die sign on with the demon lord and become one of the chefs of the damned or something. <laughs> Which is what all the lieutenants are, mm-hmm. surprise, surprise, are all the chefs that went searching on this pilgrimage and never came back. <laughs> I have to imagine, playing off the top of my head here, uh, you go to a graveyard and you see all the dead chefs' uh, gravestones. Mm-hmm. And, and another another food joke here. Oh, no. Uh, there's a grave named uh, Batali, and if you try and uh, like approach it, Two uh, crocodiles come and you have to kill them. Oh, I was thinking if you approach it, uh, it gives you a cinnamon bun recipe. <laughs> oh, but 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 Batali's dead to us. <sighs> I doesn't really have anything to do with what we were just talking about. Uh huh. It just occurred to me that Julia Child is a rogue, and none of you can tell me otherwise. Uh, Pip. Yes. Julia Child is there in hiding. Oh. <gasps> yes! But is she a rogue? That's my. Uh, sure. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Look, she might, if you find her and maybe, uh, yeah, this is another example of a small, like, side mission you could do, another plot coupon you can get to help you defeat, uh, Guy Fire at the end. Maybe you can go and retrieve, uh, oh gosh, what's something that Julia Child would want? Uh, a bottle of red bottle wine. wine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yep. Nicely done. <laughs> High fives. Ready? Ready? So you have to find for Julia Child a fine bottle of red wine. So you can't just go to the tavern and do that. No, no, no. That would be too easy. If it was that easy, she'd do it herself. No, you have to, like, go to literal hell or something. I don't know. Here's the um, thing. She you think uh-huh. that, but, no, she but drank actually she would have... cooking wine. <laughs> Uh, she tells oh you, go get me a good bottle of wine, but you can come back with anything. Ah, uh, so you assume that yeah. it has to be something super fancy. Yes. yes. See, that would be c- just the kind of... That'd be, oh, yeah? I'm, I'm so sorry. Uh, yeah, no, that'd be hilarious, though. That'd be a really nice little DM, like, trick, yep. as it were. <laughs> and you could run a, a perception check or something, like, what kind of wine do I think she wants? Looking around the kitchen, you think she'll take anything. <laughs> <laughs> Insight check, Pip. Insight, Insight come on. Check. Listen, I'm not a good DM. <laughs> You're getting there. You're getting there, kid. Yeah. Um, Are you, though? No, it's, it's, it's stuff me. like that. So, like, I mentioned the five Michelin stars you can try and uh, uh, recover from the lieutenants you have to defeat. Like, if you don't defeat the lieutenants ahead of time in their little bastions of power, then in the final fight, they assist the bad guy, you know? So it becomes much harder on yourself for no good reason. (laughs) Nice. So, like, yeah, you have to go and, uh, on the full moon, fight, uh, Werewolf Gang Puck. Uh, you must face Gorgon Ramsey. Gor- oh, (laughs) no. I love it. (laughs) Oh. And finally, some good fucking content. (laughs) I, I, wow. Any of y'all watch, uh, hot ones. The oh it, yeah. Was, oh, I was just thinking that Sean Evans and his channel first we feast and how that uh-huh. can turn creepy and terrible. <laughs> just, just in an echoing hallway, you know, just someone in a uh, sunny whispering first we feast. <laughs> and after each bite, uh, you must face your a dark a dark memory from your past. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh and it no. Hurts. It always hurts. There's a chalice you have to drink from, and it and that uh, makes you fight your uh, memories or something constitution bizarre. Constitution check after constitution check. Yep. <laughs> uh, the fighter can't succeed all of them. You're all going to have to take a sip. 
Uh, uh, and then Kat has no idea no what we're talking about. No fucking clue. I'm just like, I. Right. Kat, you've watched First We Feast. <laughs> I have? Yep. That's the, the Spicy sure? Wings challenge. Oh, that one. It's the Spicy Wings? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I love Spicy Wings, yeah. guy. Yeah. Because it's so great because people think they can win and they really can't. They can never win. No one wins. <laughs> Everyone loses. Everyone loses. <laughs> Uh, see that that challenge that has to be the takeaway for the players. It's like I don't, I don't think we won. I don't think he did either. <laughs> Not like that, that sounds a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, and of course there are allies. You know, yeah. yeah as we mentioned, Brothers. Julia Child is there. Uh, Paul of the Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> no, Mary Berry, come now. Yeah. Ma- uh, oh, no, here's the thing. Paul. Paul of the Hollywood signed on with Guy Fiery True. because the hot ovens, come on. It works the gluten. You have to fight the gluten golem. Oh. <laughs> Somehow I just want to say you again. <laughs> but Barry but yeah, the Barry. Help out. Aww. Yeah. Oh, wait, no, 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 no. Fuck that. You know who should really be an ally? Uh, 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 Sue Perkins and, and yeah, Mel. Ben Mel. I was thinking the same They're thing. They're actual allies. Uh, you know what they can be? They can be like little, uh, like, uh, fairy companions that, like, fly beside you and, uh. Sue Perkins has something snotty to say about that. <laughs> They're bards and they haven't been corrupted because they don't actually cook. So what the fuck do they do? Yeah. They just give you, uh, inspiration to do better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and every once in a while they turn the cameras off. And I have to imagine that, like, you go and have tea and uh, cakes at Mary Berry's cottage. Yes. Baba Yaga. <gasps> Baba Yaga. Baba Yaga. <laughs> I don't know a good joke to do with Mary Berry and Baba Yaga, but I, you just said tea in her cottage, and I just got this image in my head. <laughs> I can't explain <laughs> it. The McDonald story. <laughs> so yeah, uh, again, this is just an example of various little side stories that you can have in a campaign you run where it's like, you could have a segment where you discover a lovely t- little cottage and, uh, yeah, if you just make a nice tray of cookies, hey, you impressed Mary. She thought they were scrummy. Even, even better if, if they've got uh, like a fuck ton of vodka in them. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. What happens if you fail, though? Well, she says that you tried really hard, but you don't get, like, the full, like, bonus. You know, mm. if you did really well, that's where you get the Melon Sue sprites. <laughs> <gasps> oh, my God, you would earn them there. That's so cute. Yeah. It's like, that was so scrummy here. I I just, you you need to be rewarded. And then waves her hands and then, you know, down from the chimney come (laughs) two very sarcastic. (laughs) Yes. I want these people just in general. Fuck this game. Now, uh, as far as story beats are concerned, Mm -hmm. every single little segment that you make, you want to try and have them be doable in about like four hours of story or of, 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 of gameplay time. On the, on the high end, you know, assuming there's a lot of dithering and bantering from the players and all that. So like the, the Mary Berry cottage would be like a perfect, mm-hmm. uh, uh, side quest night where it's like, yeah, we're going to go and uh, explore out the woods here where we haven't explored before. And what do you know? There's a weird cottage. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, you know, players being players, they'll bicker with each other until eventually somebody sneaks in, fails, and then has when to make cookies. When is it ever a good idea to go into the one cabin in the woods? It's a cottage in the forest. How dare you? And to, unless, of course, <laughs> you are my kid, in which case the bears come and eat the cottage. Yes. This is, they eat the entire cottage. They eat cottage. the entire cottage. I, I had uh, an appropriate thought, being that I'm not sure Mary Berry would mind a few bears showing up in our cottage. Wow. She'd probably make honey cakes or something. That, yeah, I know. I know where Pippin was going yeah, with that. Pippin! Yeah. <laughs> oh. Listen, I was channeling Mel and Sue. Yeah, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, okay, that's Fair actually enough. probably true. <laughs> they, they'd be on my side. <laughs> they would. So, let's talk bad guy. Uh, guy Fiery himself. Because 
as as I mentioned before, like you could have all these little side adventures happening, but eventually, like that one plot coupon gets collected and that ups the heat, so to speak, <laughs> uh, on the adventure. And you know, this demon lord who before thought that you were, you know, just amusements to look at or annoyances at best now is actually starting to pay attention to you like typical bad guy hubris leading to panicked overreactions you know what i mean mm-hmm. so like let's i i still haven't really come up with what this bad guy is looking to do like i mentioned as one potential motivation finding the deck of many recipes and using that to uh, bolster his uh, cooking powers and maybe escape the hells forever. I don't know. Uh, so so what would a demon want? I mean, if these are different chefs from across the, across the planet and from other worlds as well, I think it'd be kind of cool if uh, Guy Fiery wanted to uh, uh, take over everybody else's restaurants and replace them with diners. I was oh. thinking something similar. He he wants to make everything sort of the same. Oh, uh, oh, I like this. So it, it becomes uh, all cuisine is the same cuisine. Ooh. Ooh, and so in fact, people coming to to find the lost city are in fact um, part of the problem themselves. Yeah, he's a uh, uh, you know that's how he's finding you. When he has you, he can get your restaurant. <laughs> and that's why, uh, you know, we are, d- all these chefs are drawn to the mysterious town, but in doing so, they are in fact, uh, the, the, uh, instruments of their own destruction. I like this. Which is I shit like this. I'm into. Like, if there can be a surprise moment for all the players to realize, oh shit, we're in the bad place. <laughs> 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 like, yes. that's my fucking jam. I love it when you can, if you, I love it when you can turn a story just like, on a uh, on a dime and and reach reaffect everybody's point of view. Like, what exactly have you been doing this entire time? <laughs> oh my god! And I am the problem. All <laughs> <laughs> oh, that almond milk. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and this is also why the the deck of many recipes is so important for you to have and not mm. him because you can oh. protect it. <gasps> True. Uh, whereas he. Uh, either wants to destroy it or perhaps infect it. Ooh, I like oh. that. <gasps> so it becomes like oh, it's a shortcut. Oh. It's a shortcut. It's magic. It's a uh, contagion magic. If you, uh, if you, uh, thank you, uh, Sir James Fraser, the Golden Bow. Um, if you uh, affect one thing, it ends up affecting its other things. Yeah. So like, I think if yeah. you have the blood of someone, you can do shit to them. If you have their hair and toenails, if he has. The, uh, uh, the book of recipes. Uh-huh. If he does something to that book of recipes, if he turns them all the same, it will then turn everybody else. So it's a shortcut to his plan. You brought oh, it I there. Like this. You brought it there thinking that it was the solution to defeating him. And in fact, dun, dun, dun. Uh, I, uh, I like this. Yeah. And it, it plays into the whole, uh, defying of expectation things mm-hmm. because part of the joke, FYI cat, uh, of the book of many recipes, uh-huh. uh, is it's a pay off of the deck of many things okay. from D and D, which is just a wondrous, wondrous as in very powerful uh, artifact that has potential to either be amazing or completely break the game <gasps> uh, and destroy your life, depending on a random draw of the card. Oh, that's Completely hilarious random. then, because if yeah. people know D and D, then they they hopefully suspect that there might be something up. Uh, or the, yep. what they'll suspect is it's oh it's just a funny play off the deck of many things it is probably just funny <laughs> and who knew it was actually the biggest plot coupon of all actually it'd be hilarious if like you this is my this is totally my jam if you made it cracktastic like for most of the game and then you actually get into the ziggurat and it turns out to be intensely fucking serious <laughs> yes <laughs> like you know you thought this I do was all that. a joke Fuck you. <laughs> like, especially if you've been well, using the book uh, part <gasps> of the time. Yes. yes. Now, you give that to a player, they're going to be like, I want to try this. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I want to see what this does. You're going to, like, 
give them an item card or something. Yeah. It's like once a per short rest, you can open the book to a random recipe and it will have, you know, a effect of whatever. Giving you extra turn or energy. I don't know what the fuck you guys do in your games, but <laughs> shit like You're that. You're very close. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually very close, Kat. <laughs> Yay, I win! <laughs> but once it's, like, in the ziggurat or something, or within a certain space of some other thing, it does this other thing. Oh my god. And I was just thinking, that the trial you have to undergo to get the deck of many recipes mm-hmm. is you have to do a challenge that would be impossible for the samey uh, guy fiery cooking to uh, complete. So, like... Literally, the demon lord couldn't get it. <gasps> oh, I love that. You are, like, if you had not done this thing, you would have had a win scenario. It would have been, a like, it It might have taken a lot longer for the lose. I mean, yeah. but by getting it, you have, in fact, uh, done a uh, shoots and ladders straight to you know, like Monopoly. Uh, go to... <laughs> Do not pass go. Do not collect $200 except... Go to jail. Yeah, go to jail. Thank you. I know games. I'm great at games. It's your classic <laughs> good job breaking it hero scenario. Exactly. I love that trope. Like, uh, the again, the vampire module I ran didn't really have that, so to speak. Like, it had a light version of it. Like, oh, you got this one item and he wants it back, but not strongly. <laughs> Uh, listen, he'll take it if he has the option. Listen, we stole his goddamn diary, and I am weirdly proud of that. <laughs> and then I forged it, I for- forged a copy of it. <laughs> so convincing, he thought it actually was his diary. But, and wha- <laughs> And I wrote insults in it to him. <laughs> this is why natural 20s are a DM's nightmare. Yeah, that was great. Uh, like, he figured yes. it out eventually, and he was super yes, mad at did. us. <laughs> yeah, I believe he launched lightning at Alex. Anyway. Listen, <laughs> I just said that, that the woman he loved didn't love him, <laughs> thought he was a loser. That's just fact. Yeah. <laughs> the Demon Lord was a sore loser. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, I, I like this trip. I, I, I kind of want to expand on it even further if I were to actually write this. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, are we taking notes? Oh my god. We were- I mean, we are recording it. <laughs> That's true. So, I mean, it's, That's true. Yeah, useful. Yeah. Not for any fucking podcast reasons. This is purely to help you. Yeah. yeah I mean, we, we do this for any other reason? A fair point. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know about y'all, but I do this just because I like the sound of my own voice. Yep. I like it because I like the sound of your voice, too. Oh, that's so sweet. I was lying about liking the sound of my voice, so that's nice to hear. No, your voice is lovely. Oh, thank you. Aww. Like the voice of an angel. Mm-hmm. Okay, I wasn't going to be a dick about it. Uh, <laughs> it's just I figured I'd insulted you a great deal at the beginning of the podcast, and I really want to confuse the listener. <laughs> Does Fair she enough. like her? Do, are they friends? I don't know. Keep it on the toes. Keep them guessing. That's what we want from a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Uncertainty as to the affections of the uh, actual people. Just like a real family. <laughs> <laughs> no one must ever know that we're not. <gasps> <laughs> okay. Brendan's like, quick, uh, hide the secret. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, no, I was trying to think know, of what we can talk about next. Uh, uh, other artifacts? Well, <laughs> I was, I told Pip one that would be a heavy duty, uh, adventure zone slash the Bim Bam reference. <laughs> Go on. Oh, Taco's instant food cart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ah. Uh, uh, cat, cat, in this case, it is a food carriage rather uh-huh. that you can uh, keep in your pocket and speak a command word and throw it out in front of you and then instantly a fully stocked carriage with kitchen inside uh, appears before you. I mean, that's useful. <laughs> yeah. Yay. I was more thinking, um, or not more thinking, I don't, I don't mean to rain on anybody's parade. Yeah. Um, so what would you need, f- let's say, from us to uh-huh. to accomplish writing this? Uh, How can we, in our infinite wisdom, assist you? 
dramatic plot points. Ooh. But also, like, comedic plot points as well, let's be fair here. Because, again, this is Escape from Flavortown. We're not playing, like, super serious. Well, okay, so what constitutes a a, a serious dramatic thing when it's shit that gets made up by players? What's the DM's well, here's the th- role there? Well, there's all sorts of things you can keep in your toolkit. Mm-hmm. You can have things called you know, non-player characters involved that over the course of time, just because players want to go and talk to people, they can form, you know, friendships with or whatever. Uh, so you can put them in peril. And so then that gives like a element of danger and pressure that like, oh, now I got to go uh, save this uh, little orphan child who just got captured. The kid makes him uncool. Yeah. <laughs> Going back to fixing Samurai. Oh, that's true. That's a good point. <laughs> so there's things like that. And then there's just a playing to uh, the typical power fantasy as well. Like, oh, there's a really strong challenge over there. And you know what? I am just enough of a glory hound that I want to go and conquer it. So, so maybe somebody might be like, oh, that demon lord's a dick. Mm-hmm. I'm going to make it my goal to embarrass him or to kill him. Pick your poison. So, do you plan these ahead of time? How do you how do you ensure yeah, that sure. your your uh, you, you dumbass kids multiple, you create multiple hooks? Okay, yeah. If you're writing your own thing, you plan out a little bit in advance what the, each possible hook can do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if you know enough about your world, then even if they don't take any of these goddamn hooks, even though even though you had this really <laughs> cool one uh, over here with like espionage and shit. But you can work with it anyway. <laughs> In another way, uh, you can also play to hooking the particular players that you're playing with. Uh, so, like, if you know that, uh, say, Pippin uh, is a librarian character. Mm-hmm. Weird. I don't know what you're uh, talking about. You can dangle uh, uh, long-lost tomes for instance and it's like oh well surely the librarian would want to go and recover the tome of many recipes or deck of many recipes however we want to decide that one because you know what that is a rare one-of-a-kind book and my library does collect cookbooks yeah they do and you know what just imagine the clout that that librarian character would get for recovering that book holy crap it'd be so good for my patrons (laughs) (laughs) So, like, there's little things like that you can play to, mm-hmm. but, like, uh, a good way to go about it is just having, as Pip said, all these potential hooks. Mm-hmm. Like, so you can have, like, the major story beats, the major calls to adventure mm-hmm. uh, to start things off, for instance. And generally, that's all you really need because you could design this such that, like, each plot coupon just is, like, a never-ending chain of, like, this plot coupon can lead to two more, like... You, you defeat Gorgon Ramsey and you discover a map to the mysterious cottage in the woods. What is this? Mm-hmm. And it turns out like he was like formulating an attack plan to try and, uh, destroy the, the Mary Berry. Uh, I don't know. Uh, and, it's stuff like that. And keeping in mind that your players are playing for a reason, mm-hmm. they do want the adventure that you've plotted out. Yeah. Okay. Uh, they want to be involved in this. I mean, so that in that way, it's how is that similar or different from trying to bring in a hook for, let's say, regular fiction? So, I mean, you know, here's the secret: it's not. <laughs> you know how how sometimes you, the writer, have this thing you want to happen, mm-hmm. and the character you're writing is all like, well, "Why the fuck would I ever do that?" Mm-hmm. It's like that. But played out in real time. See, I hadn't thought of it that way. Uh, and your characters are like, what about this other thing over here? And you're like, but, but this thing's happening over here. And they're like, but I don't want to do that. You know, that's actually what I, I hadn't even thought of from that angle. I was thinking of it from the, uh, perspective of, you know, how do you entice your reader to want to keep reading? Because yeah, your players are all playing because they want to play a game, but readers can just put down the fucking book. But I hadn't thought of it in terms of the writing aspect. Like, you, you gotta be careful, I guess, of, of the hooks that you put 
for your characters. Mm-hmm. Like if you have a librarian character and you also happen to have a a t- tome of great worth, your reader will be sitting there being like, "Why the fuck isn't the librarian going after that tome of great worth?" Uh, exactly. Isn't that what like she's into? <laughs> and it's also uh, an exercise in in knowing that whatever your character is doing in your work, other shit is going on too. Other shit's always yep. going on. Because when you're DMing, you need to be aware of that in case the character suddenly goes, oh, hey, let's go see what's happening over there. Because you need to know what's going on over there. Mm-hmm. Whereas when you're writing a book, you don't necessarily need to go into it. But as mentioned earlier, you still need to know. Yeah. Uh, although there's also the trap of like, if something interesting's going on over there, why the fuck isn't your character over there? Because <laughs> they fucked up. <laughs> That's usually the case. Yeah. But like, in a typical adventure like you you tend to have like little hints as to like oh there's some trouble happening over here or there's always the classic way of starting off an adventure everybody's in the bar somebody asks for rumors you know and then suddenly that that's when the the album starts playing and um stevie yes. next comes in <laughs> we, we we put up the our lighters and uh we start talking about what went wrong it's just always gotta, how it goes. You just gotta go your own way. <laughs> oh, oh no! I'm sorry. I'm thinking of a Mulaney quote. Run, <laughs> <laughs> scatter. <laughs> Fun fact: that is in fact a D and D spell, and someday I'm gonna learn it. <laughs> someday, I'm, li- I'm imagining you like looking up, like someday. Okay, before we uh, go into. I don't, know, I don't know if we want to try and do a game section here. Fuck it, why not? Yeah. Well, uh, well, before we go into that, what are some ideas for the penultimate showdown? Because we can talk about plot coupons and little encounters all the you know live long day here, but I want to try and have a dramatic potential showdown. It can go like a couple of different ways because you know player variability, all that. You can kind of give a couple of options, but like. For instance, when I was picturing it, I was picturing like a, you know, Iron Chef, a, uh, Mithril Chef cook off, Mithril Chef cook off to end all cook offs. And that's where all these little coupons you've collected on the way, uh, the advice from Julia Child, sell and, <laughs> sell and moo, uh, <laughs> yes, uh, floating on your shoulders, giving you good advice, uh, well, advice, well, giving you encouragement. <laughs> Uh, all that stuff, and that's what leads you to uh, defeat Guy Fiery in a cooking challenge, and then because of the magic of the ziggurat or whatever, he gets banished back to hell because you cooked that well. Mm-hmm. Well, and then maybe the townspeople are free. Yay! Yay! Well, it's it's funny you mentioned the townspeople being free. <gasps> oh no! Uh huh. Because. Because the whole title of this thing is Escape from Flavor Town. Ooh. That's true. <laughs> Bringing in the title, Pippin. Uh, I know, right? So maybe, maybe you defeat Guy Fiery, uh, through whatever means, uh, you, you cast him into the fire. However. Uh, but, you know, what was secluding Flavor Town? What was keeping it up? What was allowing it to exist with all these people in it? Uh-huh. So good job breaking it, hero. Again! <laughs> oh, no. Motherfucker! <laughs> because uh, you've destroyed Favortown, and the last adventure, a uh, last bit, is you trying to get out. You can still nice. lose. I love it. You can still lose, even after beating the big bad. Yeah. Because then you need to start prioritizing things. Can you get out? Can you get other people out? How many people can you get out? Do you still have the artifact? Can <gasps> it get out? Oh, I do love it when you only get like a Pyrrhic victory. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you didn't get all the plot coupons, it's almost impossible to get a full success. I love it. Oh my god, I love that. I'm just picturing Pip right now because of your suggestion there. The party throwing the food carriage out and then rolling down the side of a ziggurat in a runaway cart. <laughs> yeah. Uh, does anyone have access to plane shift? Good job. Everyone else is dead. <gasps> oh, Julia live in Child. guilt forever. Yeah, Julia Child is dead. Did Mel and Sue get out? Did you? Ha- how many people could you take with you in that plane shift? How many are in your party? 
Oh my god, and those people were all cooks too. So have you in fact created a a severe bottleneck in the development of cooking now is, in the world? Is there now a power vacuum? <gasps> Without Guy Fiery. A good point. Of course there is. Is Guy oh, Fiery just a title? Sequel. <laughs> you defeat Guy Fiery and you become Guy Fiery. Oh no. Oh my god. Uh cuz I spoilers for the vampire module for Curse of Strahd. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. From what I understand, having gone to look at it after I f- we finished the campaign, uh, technically speaking, you don't win. Nope. Because even after you've defeated, air quotes, Strahd, uh, and you've escaped, he's a vampire. He's undead. He comes back. And the cycle that you were part of just keeps going. Uh, and the people of Barovia become trapped again in their, in their demiplane of dread or whatever it is. And if anything, they've lost even more hope. Because it's that Persephone thing, uh, with that uh, guy in the pool of water, uh, with the fruit just out of his reach and whenever he tries to get a drink. That's not Persephone, that's Tantalus. No, Tantalus was, but, per- no, but Persephone gave him a drink of water. What? Uh. And so now he knows what he's missing when he right. can't. Oh, shit. Drink. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Same. The assholes, oh. I know my Greek myths. Fair, fair. So, sorry. So inadvertently, she, she made it worse for him. (laughs) And Hades is like, oh, babe, you know me. Thanks. (laughs) I mean, Hades in my head is not such a dick that he would do that to her. Nah, nah. He's actually probably a nice guy. Um, he's just got a job to do. I love the potential for Pyrrhic victories. Here's my thing. Yeah. My thing is, all right. So let us pretend briefly that, uh, Guy Fiery may be based on a real person. What? Yeah, look, I, I, it's a stretch. I just just go with it. Go with it for a second. Okay. I know. Um, he in in this uh, strange situation uh, is doing what's a a variety of reality show. <laughs> oh. What if you get to the end of all this and uh, 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 to pull another direction, it comes out with a Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Uh, it turns <laughs> out. <laughs> Like what you're actually escaping, the escape from Flavortown is not a literal escape from, uh, from the situation, but now you have to deal with the fact that you are in fact living in a constructed reality, a Truman show, if you will. How many more references can I get in here? Um, <laughs> and what you have to escape is you have to escape being the bit characters of, uh, a reality <laughs> show. And I mean, it doesn't have to be terribly complicated. It could, um, uh, uh, if anything, yeah, cool. it's like bit characters that ascended to become main mm-hmm. characters, and you don't tell the players this this entire time, yes. and they get to feel a little annoyed. <laughs> and what if you had in the background, you had uh, some of you know some villains that they're fighting, you know, instead of like the Black Knight, you know, it's a Black Knight like fight, uh huh, but it's like one of the Boom Guys or something, or <laughs> or um or or one of the what are they called script directors or something script people. Continuity. Yeah, who, who's doing, but like not obvious, but you as the DM know it so that later when it all is revealed, then the, the uh, players can go back and go like, Oh shit. Wait, what? <laughs> like I killed some lowly production assistant. Oh man. Oh my God. Imagine if one of the, like they just come across a feast at some point. And it's just a nice waypoint. And you find out later it was like the green room table. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it oh, was like no. the production breakfast. It was like nothing mm-hmm. but bagels. <laughs> yep, craft services. Yes, it's the craft services yep. table. That's what it is. Um, and, uh, uh, but like there was nothing, like there's nothing bad about it. They thought maybe it was poison. They thought there was a trap. Like, no, it's just a craft services table, but they fucking ruin it because they eat all of it. And then that is what creates a horde of, uh, people showing up, <laughs> like increasingly cranky. Although I, I will say if you ever present a just, table full of food to players it's a fucking trap nine times out of ten yeah it's like that food is poison we're just gonna walk away do, 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 do. <laughs> yes. so always put something nice on there always put something nice that's the lesson i'm learning here yeah the, the trick is to mess with player expectations uh and no matter how high or roll they low uh, low they roll go well it seems okay <laughs> <laughs> yep that eh, seems okay seems all right <laughs> seems safe <laughs> you think it's safe Oh, that's a, oh, that's dangerous language there. 
<laughs> that's what you use all the time as a dungeon master. And that's how they spend ten minutes trying to figure out how to open an unlocked door. <laughs> yeah. That sounds like it comes from experience, Pippin. I just heard about this one. I I watch a lot of Critical Role, and the the main big bad of their first campaign was doors. <laughs> <laughs> One time, it took three people, two spells, and someone took damage to open a door that was barred with a bit of wood. <laughs> wow. I still remember the chair. The chair. In which the dungeon master uh, described in elaborate detail a chair in the middle of the room, well, and everyone- Here's the thing. He elaborately described the whole messed up room and mentioned that there was a chair upright in the center. And in the center. Fuck. And apparently he explained later that it was just to show that the chair had been placed afterwards. Oh. That someone had sat down to sort of look at what had happened. Uh-huh. But everyone was like, "Fix! is there something under the chair? <laughs> and so afterwards they were like, well, let's talk about more, more about this chair. Was there a pillow on it? Did it have arms? <laughs> How many legs did this chair have? Because he got so annoyed with them because they kept asking. <laughs> well, hey, so... I just, uh, Pippin gave a, a potential ending. Uh, I gave a potential ending. Alex, what do you got? Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna go with good ending, cause fuck, guys. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I'm not sorry. No, uh, you defeat the guy fiery and the flavor town ascends to a higher plane. Oh. Yeah. They become. Do you ascend with it? Does it become the plane of flavor? Yes. Oh my god. What? In in it's D and D, there are multiple planes. Okay. Of existence. Of existence. You you live you live on the prime material plane. There's the astral plane. The plane of fire, water, water earth, uh-huh. law, chaos, and now flavor. Flavor. <laughs> I would want to go there. <laughs> oh my god! I yeah, love it. Yeah. Totally not going and completely off the rails, but no. Uh, Though then there's the whole escape from Flavor Town thing again, because if now you have plane shipped, what the fuck are you gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> still, still escape from from Flavor Town. Well, uh, that's when that's when you make a dessert so heavenly. Bum, um, bum. You go to heaven, and then that's another plane, and then you can probably find somebody who's nice and send you back home. Hmm. One would hope you'd find somebody who's not a dick there, is all I'm saying. Well, if you befriended Mary Berry towards the start. Oh, she would. Yes, Mary Berry probably does have the power to just send you home with a nice lemon tart in your backpack that you find later. Because she would do that. Yeah. No, and, I mean, there's already the, the, uh, the packet of summer and and flavored water elemental, so. So So there are elementals of flavor. (laughs) <laughs> that is true. The packet of uh, summon flavored water elemental uh, allows you to uh, say a command phrase. Say, for instance, "Hey, flavored water elemental man!" Oh no! And the flavored ele- uh, water elemental comes crashing through the nearest surface and uh, fights for you. Uh, but Brendan, what what does it say when it comes through the through the surface? Oh yes. <laughs> Verily. <laughs> there you go. Yes. I like the verily. 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 I love it. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> oh, man. I love it. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I, I like these various endings. And frankly, when you have a story that can be told completely off the rails, having a good ending in mind is like 90% of the work. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and to some degree, and bringing it back to to maybe our our usual oeuvre, that that's perhaps a useful thing to remember when writing. Figure out your ending. Figure out a couple of endings and just like aim toward them. Hope for the best. You'll, you'll probably hit one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> At least okay. one of these will work. So, uh, do we have time for a quick game? A game. You know what? We never have done this game. We've never managed it. Uh-huh. I want to play, and a child shall lead them. I mean... So what happens when a kid shows up? When you add a kid to the fucking story. So if... You get Master Chef Junior. Oh my god. <laughs> Dibs! <laughs> Fuck! Oh, 
Damn. All right, so elaborate a little bit, Pip, I, with the MasterChef Junior Challenge. I feel like I don't have to. MasterChef Junior <laughs> was a masterful joke. I win at everything. But also, <laughs> also, I'm not sure how being a child affects your stats in D&D. So whatever. Whatever. It doesn't really change much, except in how you're role-playing it. Fair wasn't, enough. Wasn't that one guy in uh, <laughs> playing a child, and then and when he left after, he's like... <laughs> in the game I DM, one of the players decided to play... I think he was actually like 14, but we were all playing against if he was much younger. <laughs> nah. That's hilarious. Actually, that, that does remind me... That does remind me of another D&D... Po- not, actually, not another D&D podcast in which one of the player characters is like... 16 tops, but 16 in gnome years, which is like eight oh, emotionally. God. <laughs> he, he collects merit <laughs> patches. It's fantastic. Oh, my. Nice. <laughs> See, I, I, mean, I made, I made my child character, uh, make an athletics check to get up onto a table. Oh my God. <laughs> and then he failed. Oh. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, you oh, didn't get no. up there. <laughs> you tried to look cool. Oh. You didn't. <laughs> oh my God. So you made a dipper is what you're saying. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Sounds like and it. And then he couldn't show up for subsequent games. He was just there for that day. <gasps> so it's like, okay, okay, okay. He just sort of disappeared. So, <laughs> oh my, he's a child of the city. Leave him alone. Before, before one of you guys can take Fuck. it, I'm going to have Mabel show up <gasps> in this town. <gasps> and she's just always looking forward to trying out whatever the player characters are cooking next. And is always your biggest fan. Aww. It's not a cooking related joke. It's just a person who loves everything you do. It was so supportive. And we'll provide you a grappling gun. Yes. I would love it as like a surprise grappling hook. Like, you do not expect this from this character whatsoever. And then, like, yes. if you happen to have the wherewithal to ask her for it, she's like, yes, of course. Yeah, the trick is you have to ask. <laughs> <laughs> grappling hook! <laughs> and she has waddles. As an animal companion. Oh my god, everyone keeps trying to cook waddles. <gasps> <gasps> yeah. Waddles. Oh, that's how you... That's how you can get the bad ending. <gasps> That's how you can get Mabel angry at you. And if Mabel's angry at you, you lose. Like, it doesn't matter. She will go and join Guy Fiery. She will do... I mean, like, that's it. You ruined yeah, a yeah, perfectly yeah. good thing. Yep. <laughs> you cooked... The, and I, I love that as a kind of a potential gotcha trap. You can have, like, all sorts of warnings, like, the sweet, innocent child is best friends with this pig. It might be delicious, Maybe. Roll an insight check. Oh, you rolled a one? Oh, you poor fool. <laughs> you think it's going to be delicious. Dun, dun, um, dun, dun. And I've got one. I mean, oh, shit. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. Uh, Go. Hansel and Gretel. <gasps> oh, that's oh, no. awesome. Yeah, yeah. No. Fuck. You're getting actual food in there. Yeah, yeah. You have to go and fucking do a rescue mission because there's a gingerbread house. <laughs> Oh, no. Oh, no. And that could be a hag that you have yeah. to kill. Oh, no. <laughs> I love it, Al. I love it. <laughs> oh, shit. Does- Hansel and Gretel in. In? Oh, uh, Brent's doing the, the uh, Gor- Gordon Ramsay, uh, uh, like, like, ingredient in. Cooking. Oh, God. Young children <laughs> in. Gingerbread in. So. 500 degrees. Oh, my God. Perfect. Uh, <laughs> finally some good fucking food. Um... <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just going to keep <laughs> referencing that meme over and over again. Wow. But also, it's it represents a genre shift. Like if you, like it would be pretty funny as if you, um, you know, uh, uh, fell into a trap maybe of some kind, and in that trap, it's a uh-huh. related food problem, Hansel and Gretel, but it's a genre shift. So it's it's uh it's like fairy tale bullshit. Yeah, that happens a lot. <laughs> um, nice. and then all your like maybe your spells work differently and your cooking junk work differently. Because you switch genres until you and you have to escape the Hansel and Gretel trap before you can get back to the regular quest. You tell your pro- players like like uh, a roll a perception check. Uh, okay, okay. You happen to see a trail of breadcrumbs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then oh, in the background there's like a, a wolf, like just continually stalking you. Because again, genre yeah. shift. So you can't just like fuck around and not deal with Hansel and Gretel. <laughs> Be like, maybe this is a new adventure. No, it fucking isn't. <laughs> if you do nothing, the wolf will eat them. Like, literally. <laughs> like, that's what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Cool. Um, All right, that's cat. Fuck. I-, I love how this was my fucking idea. 
And, and then you just keep on getting, uh, <laughs> getting sniped. You done fucked up, kid. <laughs> Evidently. So I was really thinking about, you know, when it said a child shall lead them, I thought it'd be pretty funny to have a, um, just to ha- oh my God. I never fail at this game. Why am I <laughs> failing at this game? The game portion's always the part where I win. I mean, like you guys do okay too, obviously, but I, mean, uh, you- I really feel like, I really feel like I come up and beyond all the rest of you constantly. Well, um, you, you st- we, Upip still has the high score from, uh, for reaching that far morning. <laughs> that's a good point. I've, I don't win the title game as often. Um, okay. Listen, I'm just, Amazing. I'm an outlier and shouldn't be counted, which is why you can claim whatever title you just tried to claim. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm gonna make you a Not button. Not really a compliment, but okay. I'm gonna make you a button that says that. Um, okay, so a ch- you know what? You know fucking what? Fine. If we're gonna play bringing in extra characters, I would like a character that is, um, she's an NPC. Uh, uh-huh. she is, uh, wandering around. She has, uh, uh, she is secretly a genre shift in that if you come around her, if you start interacting with her, uh, things start to change around her. Um, and she is very interested in eating different kinds of food to affect different things about her own perceptions. However, when her perceptions change, other things change too. She is named Alice. Ah. Uh, oh. Fair enough. Um, the, here's the great thing. Because her perception, as her perceptions change and thereby change the world around them, for you guys as well, the trick is find food and give it to her. Do you have to stencil in with like frosting, eat me? I mean, you know, that's- It'd work on her. It would work on her. You do have to go up, like you, you, she, you can't just hand it to her. You have to put it into her, uh, uh, general sphere. Um, you know, where does she frequently go and so on. Um, and then by giving her a particular food and drink combination that she then actually ingests, uh, her perceptions change and she opens up a door to something that's like a shortcut or some shit like that. Opens up a door and that's how you get the uh, miraculous food cart. <laughs> yes. <laughs> which would, you know, which helps you actually save everybody in the town if you go through Pippin's ending. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I kind of, truth be told, I, I, I kind of like that, uh, that, that Pippin ending Pippin's there. Pippin's ending's pretty fucking great. <laughs> I think we actually ended up with bad ending, neutral ending, good ending. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, you could have, like, the neutral ending mixed in with the good one. Like, you still have to get everybody out if they want to be, like, in a normal world. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then there's mine, where it's like, you fucked up. You fucked up so you bad. You fucked up, Royal. And now your show's not going to get renewed. <laughs> Congratulations. Hero. You played yourself. <laughs> Good job, hero. You broke it. Um, yeah. So, uh, I, this is, it's, uh, it's really kind of just a, a deep in joke. You can do some really fun mechanics with it. And I think it reflects other things you can do with regard to characters and food and bringing in story and junk like that. And you don't want to stretch the premise too, too far. You can have other references in there if you want. Uh-huh. Yerp. Cool. All right. Nice. All right. So I think that was, uh, Escape from Flavor Town, yeah. y'all. Yeah. Good. Did we job. do it? Did we win D and D? I think so, Pippin. Yay! As a special episode, we'll record this adventure and see how you guys Can do. Can I play a camel in that adventure? Sure. Yay! You might need to have an actual character, uh, but you may also play a camel. What if I want a cooking camel? Don't ruin my dreams, Pippin. Cat, there's a very real possibility that a camel will get eaten. I mean, camel's good eating. Is it so? Camel, <laughs> camel's available eating. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note. Alrighty. So as always, if you have an idea or a prompt to submit, head on over to nostorysacred.com slash submission. Follow us on Twitter at nostorysacred, or you can send us an email through contact at nostorysacred.com. Your hosts have been Alex McDonald, Brendan McDonald, Pippin McDonald, and Catherine Crichton. Editing for this episode, done by Brendan. Transcript done by Ashley DaCosta. Art by Jay Wolf. Show notes and transcript are available at nostoryasacred.com. Thanks for listening, everyone, and please rate, review, and subscribe to No Story is Sacred. 
You can also visit our Patreon page to support the show and get neat rewards at patreon.com slash no story is sacred. See you next time when we talk about the 1955 film, The Court Jester. <gasps> Until then, <laughs> where no story is sacred and any story can be changed. I'm Brendan. I'm Pippin. I'm Alex. And I'm Kat. And we're No, no Story, story is Sacred. sacred.